Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week eight of journaling on a budget starting from scratch. And so um, earlier this week we did, or last week, I don't remember, um, but we made our own postage stamps and a template to make them. And so I thought this week we would, for our journaling series, we would make some clusters because I wanted to make some paper clips. And um, so I thought that we would use our stamps to do that. So here is one that I have already made, and I just used some leftovers. Um, whenever I'm making a journal, I try to, I have a container that I try and throw stuff in that I've been using throughout the book already um, as I use different things. And that way later on, as I go to pull things out, you tend to have more um, continuity throughout your journal because you're kind of using the same thing. So, you know, I had a feather in there and that's a piece of one of our borders. Um, this is a piece of the gauze that we use to make, I'll show you, um, that we use to layer behind our little word here. And I wanted, because this, this page is so plain and eventually it will have something else on it, but I really wanted a paper clip on this plate, on this page. So I just made this little paper clip to go on there. And so that's what I think that we're going to do today. So I think that that looks really nice. It looks cute and you could put it there or you could also put it over here if you wanted to. And then you can just use it as decoration or you can use it to tuck something else into. And we'll figure out that as we go through the journal, whether we wanna put something else in there or not. I kinda like the way that sticks out over the top. And so I want it on the top. Now, the one thing about this is I put my little, um, a piece of a border there. And so when you flip it over the other way, um, you see the back of that border. I could do a few things. Number one, it doesn't look bad the way it is. Number two, I could take the same color pens and just go over the line so that it's more of a solid color because it's kind of faded where it just soaked through the paper. Or I can actually put another piece on the back of this paper clip. And I did make this to be a hidden paper clip if I want it to be. And what a hidden paper clip is, is that your paper clip is sandwiched between two, like two clusters. And now actually I'm not so sure if I might have glued this together. Let me see here. Do I have something I can, something I can put in there and see if it's actually stuck. So, um, but what I can do is the, the paper clip goes over a folded piece of paper. So if I want to, I can put something else on this side and then you just take that piece of paper and slip that over the page and you have decoration on this side because you'll make a cluster to put on there. And then you have decoration on this side because we've already covered the other side of the paper clip. So I'll show you how we're gonna do, how you can do that. But if you don't wanna use it as a double-sided paper clip, you don't have to. You can just go ahead and put it on your page just like that. I normally make my paper clips a lot of times this way because then I can decide later exactly what it is that I want to do um, with this paper clip because I might want to cover this up and then I'll be ready to do that because I've already got um, my paper stuck in there and ready to go. So, but I really wouldn't want to do that until I know what's going on this page because I could decorate that pink and decide that I want this page to be green and then they, it might not look nice together. So, but that's what we're going to do today is just make up some clusters and I just grabbed out some, um, some of my painty papers. This is a stamp that I made and um you know just a bunch of different i think a lot of these are stamps that i made and just some different painty papers so we're going to use those for our clusters i have just a bowl here that i throw stuff in i mean it's got all sorts of different different things pieces of paper and this is what i use for clusters and um then i've got some paper clips here in large sizes and small sizes let's see I want to do an orange one, so I don't, I don't really want to, I'm going to go with that little one. I like the big paper clips for certain things, but I really don't, there's a little orange one. I don't really care for the great big ones for my clusters, unless I'm making a great big cluster. So, um, so yeah, so what you do is just have a piece of paper 
this whatever or a piece of cardstock. And what I did was I had a strip of cardstock cut, so I just cut off a bit of it. This is, and this does not have to be to any size, but just in case you want to know, this is about two and three quarters inches long. And then I just folded it in half and used my corner rounder to cut off the corners. And I'm going to build my cluster on this piece of paper. And um, But before I do that, I'm going to put the paper clip right on there. And the only thing is you want your paper to be longer than your paper clip so that um, your paper clip gets completely covered. So now you can use it just like this to put on a page just like that or because you folded your paper in half, you can decorate this side and decorate this side and then this will slide over your paper and it will still be a paper clip. So we're gonna start with this one and I did pull out, I know I have an orange page in there so I thought it would be fun to do an orange one. These are the ones that we did the other day when we made the postage stamp. So we've got some nice black and white ones here, a couple of roses, and some little hand signs there. But And then I pulled out a sum off of my, um, my roll of stamps that I've already made. And I really thought I would like to do an orangish color one. So I picked out this, this orange one here. So what I wanna do is, I think I wanna start with a piece of paper and I kind of want to do it in the orange tones as a background. And I think I'm going to use, I like this because it's oranges and it's orange and pink. So I just want to find a spot. I guess right in here maybe. I want a piece that's going to be big enough to be my backing. And all you need to do is just make it bigger than whatever size paper you put in here. There is no right or wrong size. Just cut a piece of cardstock and fold it in half just so long as it is longer than your paper clip. That's all you need to be. So I think I'm just going to tear around this but I think maybe I'll leave some of those little punch scallops on there. And we'll just kind of do it like that. And then give it a little bit. I've got some. This is Victorian velvet. I had somebody was asking about the um, distress inks. You can do this with, you know, the, the whole edging thing with any kind of a ink that you have. It doesn't have to be distress inks. Um, the distress inks kind of blend very nicely together, but so do other water-based inks. So, Tim Holtz is very popular and everybody loves him and he has great ideas. I love his style. So I think that's just kind of where everybody was like, oh, these are just great. He does great tutorials to kind of teach you how to use his items. So that's where it came from, but you don't have to have the distress pads um, to edge the edges of your paper. You can do that. You can even do it with a marker. You can do it with a, a watercolor marker. You can do it with watercolors, any ink pads. I do it sometimes with my permanent ink, depending on what I'm doing. So don't think that you have to have distress inks to edge your papers. So there, there's one little bit and that will cover my whole thing. It will eventually be glued on there. And remember, the one thing you have to remember is the top of this is going to stick right at the very top of your page. Whether you put it on the paper clip or whether you put it between the cardstock, when you put that on your page, that's gonna be the edge of your page. So anything sticking over that is going to stick out the side of your book or the top of your book. And if you want to put it on the bottom of your book, then you really don't want anything hanging out because it just gets squashed. Um, so, but if, you know, like, so if I were to put this like this, then this much of it is going to stick out the top of my book, which could be covered or painted or whatever at a later date. Or I could even do it before I, before I start. I could, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should just get a little color on there so it's not just a really super white. I'm going to kind of make it so that we've got the little squares there from my sponge. Another thing you don't have to have this particular kind of sponge. Um, any sponge works, just soaks up the ink. And um, most reason people use these is because they're super cheap. 
I used to use round ones, but they're not as cheap. So, now what did they do with my orange paper clip? Oh, well, here it is. I don't need it right this second anyway. So this is going to go there. This is going to go on top of it. So I definitely want to edge this, but I don't know that I want to edge it in the pink again. I think that would be too much pink. Let me see if I have some orange here. I, yeah, I do have some orange here. I'm going to go with the Wild Honey. It's a lot lighter. I also have sparse Spiced Marmalade. I don't have a sponge for that one. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to edge around this a bit. There, now that's going to go on there. After we get some more layers, that's going to be towards the top, and I think I want to put a word on there. But let's look at what kind of... There's a really cute little piece of peach colored lace, so that might look nice on there. Always have to love the muslin. I really, really do. But let's see what we've got for... Okay, here is some dyed muslin that I dyed. And those colors, I think, will look really nice with that. So, I dyed it and I squunched it. And I'm going to take this piece right here because it's a little bit flatter and doesn't have as much of the dark color on it. So I want that back there, and I want this back there, and I want this on top. So those are gonna be there like that. Maybe just a touch of music paper and a word. Let's kind of glance in here and see what else I have. Ooh, I might like this fabric actually better than, oh, I don't know. I don't like that little piece of lace with this one. Let's see. Fray it up a little bit. Okay. See about putting that on there with that and I want a word but I think that maybe the word would look nice on there and I do want a little bit of lace Let's see if I think that that's too small just want to see what else I have here it's another piece of that peach colored one Okay, let's see. All these different things here. We'll just kind of try them out and see what it looks like. Okay, so that looks actually pretty cute. I think it needs a little something around here. But the first thing, I'm going to put a staple right in that, and it should grab all of the layers. Let's see, here's my stapler, and I think I have yellow staples in here, so, which isn't going to matter because I'm going to put a word on there, so the word, yeah, I've got a yellow staple in there. See, yellow staples. And the way that you get colored staples is color them with a permanent marker, a Sharpie marker, any kind of permanent marker. Alrighty. So those look pretty good. And it's a little bit dark, so I want something lighter in there. I don't know if I have any like eyelash trim or something in here. I do like to kind of wrap that in behind. Here's a bunch of stamped words. We can leave those out. Oh, here we go. Here's a little bit. Oh, and it's even like a tan color. So I think I would just take this and just kind of pick a spot to put it in there. Like that. And I'm gonna put just a 
little bit of glue in there to hold it. Let me use the Fabri-Tac. Um, I use it because it grabs fast. It's not the cheapest um, glue out there. And if you're making these and then you're just going to set them aside at home to dry for a little bit, don't use this one, just use tacky glue. It works just as well and it's much cheaper. So there, I, I, I like it because it's such a fast grab and it works very well. I just don't care for the price of it. Okay, so I've got it tacked in here. I'm gonna cut this piece off right here. Pull that up and out a little bit and then I'm gonna put just a little bit more right here. Come on, there we go. Make sure I get, make sure you get both ends stuck in. It won't come off because you've got it partly glued in, but um, that way it won't just come out and just be hanging there. So we'll get this end underneath of there, like that, and you can cut it off, or you could just wrap it up in there. I think I'm going to put one right up towards the top too, just to kind of hold it all in place where I want it. So it doesn't like slip down inside there and kind of disappear. There. So there we go. And now I'm just going to take this and glue it on here. <coughs> Excuse me. And it doesn't matter. You can choose whichever side you like to have on the outside. And glue your cluster to the inside. Because you're going to be taking it off and on and off and on. Try and glue it on well. If you're using the tacky glue, you can always um, set something heavy on top of it. Because you've got that paper clip and everything underneath. So you have to look at your paper clip and then look at your at your cluster and see is that the way I want it to go because you could do it any way that you want to and then you just put your paper clip to clip on um, going straight down like that. Okay, so I'm going to give that a good press and check our words real quick. And... I like the relax, that's kind of nice. Let's see. Let's see. Just looking at some that I had typed out on my computer. Let's do shine. I think that those are like oranges or peaches, I think. And um, so it takes sunshine to get those to grow. And we all want to be able to shine in our own way. We've got the music there, or the musical notes, which make me happy. Kind of feel shiny, however you'd want to say that. But it's kind of my back thinking is, I just think that this one, I just think that this word goes. a little bit of orange or do I want to use the okay we'll use the red around the edge and then maybe a little bit of orange on top of that because this is quite dark the orange will make it a little sunnier if I can figure out what I did there it is I 
and I'm going to kind of leave the center just a little bit white and a little bit of glue on that and that one because it's going to be paper to paper and I'm going to use it to cover up that um, staple you don't have to that's why I color my staples so if I don't cover them up they're colored and they look pretty and you don't have to have any kind of special stapler you don't have to have any kind of special staples you just take your regular staples color them with a sharpie marker and now you have colored staples I'm going to put that on there like that there and I press kind of hard so you can see that staple there um, just because I wasn't thinking about it but it actually looks kind of cute now it's going to go on like this yep so that's going to kind of be on an oh maybe I should have done it get off of there I don't think I want to twist it now because it'll be have glue behind it but maybe I should have put it more at this angle um, so that those two were at different angles because they're both going like that. Just something to think about when you're putting things down. It kind of looks nice sometimes to make sure that you flip things this way and that way. But there is no right or wrong way. So let's see about finding an orange page to put this on. Oh, I like this page. Okay, now look at the center of this page. I was looking at this book earlier. That is the most beautiful page I have seen in such a long time. I just love this. It is one that I dyed with, I'm not even sure. I think it was paint water, and I just think it's so gorgeous. It could have been, um, it could have been Kool-Aid, no. I'm putting it at a bit of an angle because I really want it to be that way for today. I don't know why, but that's the thing with the paperclip. You can put it however you want to. The paperclip's covered up. And if we decide to put one on this side so that we can take this and we'll put this, if you can see this, I'll do it from the side. You take your paper and it fits right over your page, just like that. And that way, when you decorate this side, you just make sure that you don't glue that paper together. And I always round the edges of my paper so that when I'm trying to slide it on, um, they don't catch on the page. But yeah, so I can cover that up if I want to, or I can just make it be a paper clip. Okay, yeah, I like that there. So, and then something else, you can put your little um, things on tags, but something else I was looking at is I, well, actually, I think I was going to put that over here. I was because I took a couple of the tags that I had made the other day and I think I'm gonna put them this was a pocket like this and so I folded it back so that my tags would actually still stick out a bit and these tags have to be finished but they're nice for journaling and then I'll have this pocket here and I'll glue it down I could also make it then because I will glue both ends I could even make it so that maybe I put something in here but I'm not sure exactly what because I think it would just fall out but we'll see about that when the time comes okay so we've got our paper clip that we made and then we have the other paper clip that I made without you here but uses a lot of this stuff that I had just thrown into my little box to make this journal. Now these things will all go back in that box too because I never know later when I might want them. But I was going through and I was flipping this and I thought one of these, um, the pink, would look really pretty on the corner of this envelope. And so I thought that I would put one of them there. So this is one of those things that shows you, okay, now I've made these things, what can I do with them? Now to me, that one really just kind of blends in and disappears. And that one's really pretty. I think this one's just a little bit lighter than this one. I think I like this one. So I wanna put that right on there. I think I will edge it a little bit. And I'm gonna use the side of my, and just pick, try and pick up just a little bit because that's quite a little darker kind of than I want it to be. 
I'll have to remember to bring out something that's a little bit more pinkish. Even though this is pink, it's just a very dark pink. I'm gonna put that on there. Although this will be, I think, the perfect to edge the envelope with because it's so busy. I think that the darker will show up a little bit better. Then I don't think a light color would show up on here hardly at all. This is just gonna give me um, just a little bit of definition between the flap of the envelope and the body of the envelope because it really every time I look at this I can't I can't tell if the flap is there or there because it just blends right in so we'll get a little bit of color on here and that will help define the edges and I'm gonna run right along the edge so that it kind of soaks into the edge of the paper that will cover up the whiteness it will also make that edge a little bit darker there we go. I kind of looked to see if I made a mess on the inside. If I did make a mess on the inside, I would do something to it right now to make it not look like a mess. Ooh. And so, there it is. I'll find my top for that. Now that's a little bit wet yet because this is a shiny kind of vinyl-y type paper. So that will take a little while to dry or I could dry it off not wipe it because wiping it could wipe it off, but I'm gonna just take this little bit of fabric and press it on there. And didn't do anything really, but it does look like I've got a big spot right here. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. I thought it might give me a little pink line. Alrighty, and then, which, <laughs> I lost, here it is, I lost the one I wanted to use. So I'm gonna put that one, which way does it go? And you just try it until, that's the way it goes. Um, you just try it until you like the way it looks. Now you could put something underneath of it if you want to, but I don't think so. I think that it's gonna look pretty. It's right at the point of the envelope. It's basically just like sometimes even when you send out an envelope, you take a sticker or something and you put it over the flap like that. Well, I don't wanna do that. And this is staying shut nice enough, so I don't need to put anything there to hold it shut. So, but I, so I think I'm just going to put it on the flap itself as decoration. And because this is a vinyl, it's not paper to paper. I'm gonna wipe that off. Um, I'm gonna use the Fabri-Tac. Um, and I also use one called Beacon's 3-in-1. This is Beacon's Fabri-Tac, I think. Yeah, Beacon is the name of it. Um, and Beacon does make good glue, but the 3-in-1 is a little bit cheaper than the Fabri-Tac, and, and to me, I think that they're pretty much about the same thing. Um, you know, I'm sure there has to be something different in it because they call it something different, but... Uh, yeah, I find them very close to each other. So if you find the 3-in-1 you can get that and do these same type things. It dries just as fast and everything like the uh, Fabri-Tac does, which is the whole reason that most people, well, not most people, but I mean, the crafters that are doing the demonstrations, they just use it because it grabs fast so that you can see everything like finished. So there we go. Now we've got that envelope with the little flower on it. So that looks really cute. And now you can see that there is a flap there. Whereas before, Let's see. You know, they just, now this one's actually picked up a little bit, so you can kind of see that. But that one over there, it just so, like, blended in, I couldn't find the flap. And so now I know that I can. So there we go. Those are things you can do with your little homemade stamps. You know, you can put them on fake envelopes as a stamp. You can put them on postcards as a stamp fake ones, you know, for your journals, for journal writing or whatever, you know, you can't mail it that way, but um, you can put them on the corners of your envelopes. You can also put these on real ma mail that you mail on the outside, just use some um, glue and glue it on there. So that is one thing you can do with it. You can also use it to make tags. You can use it on your tags. You can use them to make clusters. See, this one might even look nice with a stamp on it like that, maybe with a little layering.
because those colors look really nice together. Yeah. Or I could even do it. No, it's a little too big to make this look like a postcard and put that on there as a seat. Though I could make that a little smaller. But, so you can use it for tags and you can use it for clusters. And this is a paper clip cluster, but you don't have to make them into paper clips. You can make the clusters and then use those to put on tags, to put on pages, you know, to put on um, any type of other crafting that you are doing. And then here is the other one. So I hope that you like these paper clips. They're fun to make. And, um, you know, I really do enjoy making them. And I do like the way that they, they look in your books. And I like the different things that you can do with your little stamps. And you can make those stamps any size that you want to. So there we go. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.